Hey, it's Shane again. I'm here to talk about the 2010 NFL Draft a little bit more. And today we're going to talk about offensive tackles, specifically the underclassmen that might come out for the 2010 Draft. But first, I'm going to reply to some comments made on my last two videos. So, if you want me to reply to you in video form, feel free to leave a comment on YouTube below this video. And I'll address it in my next video. It'll be a good way to interact with you and you to interact with me. So first we're going to start with my quarterbacks video. I profiled my top four quarterbacks going into this college football season. Some people had some objections with that. First comment was from Draft Day 101. He wanted to know where Jimmy Clausen, quarterback in Notre Dame, was on that list. Well, he was not on my top four list because right now I have him ranked number five. Um, now, Clausen can really develop. He developed a lot going into his sophomore season. If he takes those steps again, then yeah, I'm going to move him up to number four, move him ahead of Colt McCoy, but I really want to see him do a few things first. He needs to play like he played in the bowl game against Hawaii throughout the season. He needs to do that against top competition, against the USC's uh, that Notre Dame plays. And he also, I feel like he has to win more games. And really, when you're a quarterback for Notre Dame, it's on you and the head coach to get this team to victory. People are going to question if he is a winner. So Jimmy Clausen, not sure if he's going to come out yet. That's why I didn't put him on my list. And so we'll see what he does this year. And he might be able to really pop up, maybe even be a top first-round type of prospect by the end of the year. So we'll see. Next comment was from OmFigo114. He liked Tim Tebow actually better as a tight end than a quarterback. Maybe some teams are going to look at him, a tight end or fullback or something like that, just as an athlete on the field. But I'm not sure if he quite has the size to have the blocking tendencies that a tight end has to have. So I'm not sure if he's going to be able to block. I don't know what his hands are like. Uh, if teams ask him to work out that way, it'd be stupid of him not to, but he's going to get drafted as a quarterback. He's going to be tried out and played as a quarterback in the NFL. He's not going to go the way of you know Antoine Randall, Matt Jones, and most successfully Heinz Ward who play receiver and because Tim Tebow definitely can't play receiver. I don't know how well a quarterback can translate to tight end even, so I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and then Tharv1989 commented that... Uh, about Tebow's arm strength. I kind of criticized Tebow's arm strength a little bit. Didn't say he has as good an arm strength as the other guys in the class or from the previous year. He said Tebow has a cannon. I wouldn't quite classify Tebow's arm as a cannon. Now he's in that spread, and it, with the short passing game, he can get the ball there pretty quickly. That's what you have to do in the short passing game. But his long balls, uh, they float up there a little bit. They really don't get there uh, fast and as hard as you want a deep ball to get there in terms of arm strength. So I think it's something he has to work on. I think it's something that he can still succeed at in the NFL. You don't need elite arm strength. I don't think he has elite arm strength. It's not Matt Stafford's arm strength. It's not Javon Snead's arm strength. So we'll go from there. Now moving to running backs. Uh, and more, more specifically, people were commenting about my thoughts on Jonathan Dwyer. And GTCU17, uh, who apparently is a Georgia Tech fan, says there's 99% chance that Dwyer is not leaving Georgia Tech because of the degree and whatnot. And I agree, Georgia Tech's a great school, and their degree is definitely highly regarded. But I think back to the last big-time, top-of-the-first-round prospect that Georgia Tech had, that was Calvin Johnson. Did he leave early? Yes, he did. So uh, if you want to think back before that, I really don't know what Georgia Tech prospect was going to go, you know, top five, top ten, top half the first round, and didn't leave. So, look, if Dwyer gets a first-round uh guy from the draft advisory board, he's going to leave. He's going to go to the NFL draft, especially as a running back. You don't want to spend that extra year in college football taking a beating when you could be making you know millions and millions of dollars and have a longer life in the NFL. So I think Jonathan Dwyer will leave if he continues his trend of how he played last year. Next, we have Poseidon Band, who agreed with me. He really liked liking Jonathan Dwyer to Matt Forte, who we saw be extremely successful last year. And I don't disagree with that. Too much, uh, you know, Dwyer has the size, he has the speed. Dwyer can do a lot of different things. He can catch the ball. So Forte might, might not be a, too bad of a comparison, something I'll probably look into a little more. And the last one comes from Gonzalez, who uh, want to know my thoughts on Javid Best, who is the running back at a cow. I didn't have him in there. I do want to do another video about some more running backs like Best, like Evan Royce throughout of Penn State. Um, Best might be the, no pun intended, the best college running back right now. But I'm not sure how his game translates to the pros. He has a lot of speed, but I don't see a Chris Johnson type of can get out in space, um, can really run it up the middle as well. Let me see his toughness. C.J. Spiller has toughness. Javid Best, I'm not sure if he has toughness. I, want, I haven't watched as much tape as I'd like to on him, but um, I want to see what he can do. Let him go head-to-head -head against a defensive tackle, and we'll see what happens. So there you go. 
so feel free to comment on this video and I'll address it in my next one. Let's move on. Underclassmen offensive tackles. Going to profile four guys today. Two I think will come out and be high picks. Two I'm not so sure will do that quite yet. So um, we'll see. We'll see about that. The first guy and the guy I like the best is Anthony Davis, offensive tackle out of Rutgers. And this is a guy that probably for most even college football fans, they're not on, he's not on their radar quite yet, but he should be. And I'll tell you right now, Anthony Davis will be a great, great offensive tackle in the NFL for 10 years. I think he could be the number one pick in the 2010 NFL draft. It's going to depend on a few things. One, what we know about it, about uh, Davis is that he's big, you know, he's 6'6", he's up to 320, 325, so he really is a good run blocker, he's a really good mauler. That's great as an offensive tackle, so he's good in run blocking, but you make your money and you get picked high based on your pass blocking. So what NFL teams are going to look for in Davis this year is, does he have the nimbleness and the athleticism to play left tackle? We've seen some athletic tendencies out of him, We've seen some flashes of that. If he does it consistently this year, then I think you'll see him leave. I think you'll see him be a top five pick. And if a team like Detroit uh, gets the top pick, if a team like Seattle um, that might go quarterback, might go offensive tackle, gets the number one pick, he could be the top pick. If teams don't see that and he gets a lower grade, then he'll probably stay in school, but he's still going to become an elite right tackle in the NFL no matter what, in my opinion. So no matter what, you're going to get a great player out of him. So I really look for him to maybe come out and maybe be kind of that Jason Smith type of rise. Jason Smith got picked number two by the Rams. He was out of Baylor. Look for Anthony Davis to possibly do that this year. Uh, the other guy that I want to talk about, Brian Bulaga out of Iowa. And this is kind of the opposite of Anthony Davis. So he, he's still pretty big, you know, 6'6". Six, six. I think he's about 315 pounds. He's light on his feet. He's a good pass blocker. He's a prototypical left tackle, and this is why he's going to get picked in the first round no, just about no matter what. And that's why he's probably going to, going to come out as a junior uh, because of that. So Balaga, ideal fit would be his own blocking scheme, but um, if teams like him as a left tackle and hire, you know, Jason Smith is probably an ideal for his own blocking scheme as well. But uh, Balaga, if he can fit into a team, he can be a left tackle. He can be successful at that left tackle position for a while. And I think he's going to be a guy that's going to come out, going to get picked pretty high. So we'll see what happens with that. And two other underclassmen I'm taking a look at this year. Two guys I, I'm not sold they're going to come out and be in the draft this year. But maybe as seniors they will be. First one's Lee Ziemba from Auburn. He's a guy that's had some injury issues. That's going to be the knock on him. He had knee surgery, I believe, late his freshman year. Came back last year. Had a great year. This is another guy who is more of a run blocker. He knocks you down. He's a pancake blocker. Uh, so, you know, how, how is that going to translate for you coming out as a junior? Well, it might mean he might have to transition to right tackle. You don't get picked as high if you're right tackle than if you're left tackle. You know, I um, mean, look, two years ago, Gaza Shirellis was is more of a right tackle. The Lions took him as a right tackle late in the first, even though he may have had more talent than some of the guys taken above him, uh, just as a tackle in general. So I think Ziemba probably is going to stay in school, and and we'll see that happen. Um, you know, down the line, maybe he's a guy that will get picked late first, early second as a senior, or if he has a great year, who knows? Maybe he's he's a guy that we can see come out uh, for the NFL draft, and then. The other guy is Nate uh, Solder out of Colorado, and this is a guy that's similar to Bulaga in terms of his athleticism. He's a guy that's really nimble on his feet, really can move around well. If he, if Colorado does well and their offensive line plays well, then he's going to be the under-the-radar guy. He'll probably come out, have that second-round grade. Oh, but he's a left tackle, so he's probably going to move up because teams need left tackles. This game revolves around the quarterback. You know, the tie picks in the NFL draft are what? They're quarterbacks, they're left tackles who can protect the quarterback, and they're defensive ends who can rush the quarterback. That's who we look for. So that's why Nate might be a higher pick tackle. So we'll see if he ends up coming out. We'll see how what kind of year he has, and that's really what's going to depend if he has if he's inconsistent or if he's consistent. So there you go. Those are the four underclassmen offensive tackles that I like this year. Uh, so take a look at them, especially Rutgers, Anthony Davis, if you watch Rutgers this year at all, Big East, take a look at him, see what you like. But I'll see you next time. Feel free to comment and subscribe.